Spencer Rattler is one of the quarterbacks who's had a really beneficial offseason towards his draft stock. Since the end of the season, Rattler has really impressed scouts and NFL front offices at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, where he was named the Reese's MVP, had a very solid performance at the NFL Combine, and to top it all off, at South Carolina's Pro Day, the only incomplete passes he threw were passes that were dropped, and we'll talk about it later, that's not much of a shocker coming from his receivers. In Rattler's senior year as a Gamecock, oh my god, he had really no help, I mean very little. A team whose rushing yard leader finished the year with just over 700 yards rushing, and outside a big time and probably second or third round pick, Xavier Leggett, who finished the year with 1,200 yards and 7 touchdowns, the next leading receiver for South Carolina was at 312 receiving yards. And to top it all off, South Carolina finished the year 84th in the country in penalties. Rattler was fighting an uphill battle, not many weapons, a lot of underneath and screen pass play calls where if you don't have playmakers, those passes kind of are worthless. A little running game and a subpar offensive line. Spencer Rattler was under pressure all year. One of the worst offensive lines and just offensive units I've seen out of any of the top five, top six quarterbacks in this class. So I have all this negative stuff to say, but really my point is, despite all the terrible things around him, you really see Spencer Rattler's potential just shine through the film. Through all the crap, Spencer Rattler, he rises. All right, and just before we dive into any film, what I really want from this video is to show you the positives of Spencer Rattler. I'll still show you some negatives, but it's not gonna be like my other videos if you've been around for those, where I spend, you know, maybe 10 or 12 minutes on the positives and another 10 or 12 on the negatives. This is mostly gonna be a positive fill video since Spencer Rattler isn't a top five quarterback in this class. You know, he's probably projected as the six or seven quarterback off the board, gonna be a third or fourth round pick. I wanna focus on what Spencer Rattler can be if he hits his potential. So with Spencer Rattler, what you have to understand is he isn't as polished as every other quarterback because if he was, then he wouldn't be going in the potentially third, fourth, or fifth round, right? He'd be a first or second rounder. So with Spencer Rattler, the one thing you have to understand is every little thing that you get that's positive is a huge positive coming from a guy that's going in the third round. And timing, timing is one thing that I like from all my quarterbacks, I talk about it in every video. In here, there are many plays on film where I go, dang, Spencer Rattler, that is really great timing. And here you see the curl. I paused it right when the ball is halfway to the receiver. That is when the receiver is finally making his break. I mean, this is probably one of the best timing balls I've seen from almost any quarterback in any film I've watched all year. That's awesome. And then on this play here against Georgia, it's just a basic slant, right? I mean, it's nothing that special, but what I like about it is he doesn't throw it too early because if he does, he's probably going to hit 89 right in the face mask, but he waits and he's patient and delivers a nice ball. Obviously, the defender falls down, but either way, I think this ball would have been completed. So pretty good timing on a slant route here also. And then here's another play. Spencer Rattler drops back against Georgia, second and 11, and he immediately knows where to go with the ball and delivers it with pretty good arm strength and good timing. It's throws like this outside the numbers that make me impress at the next level. And it's the one thing that I will say, I didn't see a ton of for Spencer Rattler. Not saying he never did it, because of course every quarterback does, but I wish I saw more outside throws like this. But the ones that I do see give me a lot of hope for his NFL future. And then here's another great throw over the middle. Spencer Rattler drops back, and then he has his big-time receiver, Xavier Leggett, over the middle. And honestly, this ball was even better if the receiver didn't kind of fall backwards. You know, right here you'll see he settles down, and he starts to fall backwards because he loses his balance. A normal receiver would have stood up and went back to the ball, caught it at the high point, and it really attacked. But Leggett kind of falls backwards. But either way, this ball still gets to him on time and easy catch. And then here's another really nice outside the numbers throw. Here, Spencer Rattler comes off the play action against Kentucky. He waits, he waits, he waits. And when he has a clean pocket, I mean, he can make all the throws anyone else can make. But when does he have a clean pocket? <laughs> we'll discuss it later. But here, clean pocket, comes off the play action, and finds the corner out, and lets him catch the ball and run to get a couple extra yards. So one of the main reasons why I don't want to show a ton of negatives from Spencer Rattler's film is because... I really think South Carolina was pretty terrible. They were not a good team. I mean, you're going to see on this play here, Rattler drops back against Georgia, third and 10, and as he's getting hit, he sticks this throw. I mean, he nails it. I know it's raining, but he hits his receiver, number one, 
right in the chest, and he still somehow manages to pop it up in the air for an incompletion when this should have been a first down. Plays like this, you have to make. And I'm just going to keep running all these kind of errant plays behind me. I don't need to break them all down, but basically you're going to see idiotic drops and holding calls. With Spencer Rattler, it's really hard to see him just try to perform with a team that's so bad. The offensive line did not do any favors for him this year, whether it's not blocking or getting holding penalties. And I'm going to show you a graphic that I saw from the November 11th game. There's still two games left in the season after that game. And at this point in the season, they've had three left tackles, three left guards, two centers, two right guards, and four right tackles. That is unbelievable. You can't even write that. That's like if you turn the injury rating to zero on Madden and everyone just got hurt. That's crazy. And Spencer Rattler had to deal with that all year. You know, all these things add up over time. And it really gave me a hard time evaluating Spencer Rattler because, sure, maybe he doesn't throw outside the numbers a ton because maybe the coaches don't think he has enough time to really wait and wait and wait in the pocket and make throws. But I'm going to try to show you some throws and some plays of him maneuvering in the pocket that show, even with a bad offensive line, Spencer Rattler still made it happen. All right, and then here's a throw against North Carolina in the season opener where I go, all right, all right, this guy can make some moves in the pocket. And here you see it, right? All the defensive ends basically do a stunt towards the middle. And like right there, 77, the left tackle doesn't even block anybody. He stands there and just nobody is in his arms <laughs> to be blocked. But Rattler shuffles in the pocket. He does a nice side shuffle and then steps up. And as he takes a hit, delivers a great ball over the middle. You know, that is an NFL Joe Burrow-esque throw. That's a throw where I go, can Washington quarterback Michael Penix make this throw? I don't know. You know, we never saw Penix really handle a lot of pressure. But what I've seen for Spencer Rattler handling pressure Gives me a lot of hope for him at the next level. I'll show you some more examples. So when it comes to Spencer Rattler, I'm a bit of a hypocrite. And what I mean by this is when this play right here, I'll say specifically, we'll break it down real quick. So here it's a three-man rush against Georgia and it's a clean pocket, but he looks to run anyway and then extends the play, you know, gets out of the pocket, climbs the pocket, gets out and then makes a throw down field, which is really nice. It's a great play. But other prospects, you know, if this was, for example, I don't know, Michael Penix or Bo Nix, I would have been like, hey, dude, why did you run out of this pocket? So it's not very fair for me to kind of play a favorite towards Spencer Rattler, if you will. Like, why is it okay for him to do it when the other prospects, it's not? And truthfully, I don't care who makes it to the NFL. I hope all the quarterbacks are great in the NFL because, hey, we could always use more quarterbacks in the National Football League. But my whole point in this is Spencer Rattler's line was so bad that he knew he was on a tight clock, a tight one, two, three, got to get it out and go all season long. You know, and this is just another example. You're playing Georgia, one of the best teams in the entire country, and your line's been terrible all year. So Spencer Rattler knows he has a short clock. So he hits his three-step drop, he waits, and then he goes. He does this constantly. But I look at it as a positive. The guy knows what he has, and he needs to get out of the pocket. And he doesn't always look to do this. But in certain situations like this play, I go... Really nice job. So based on the last clip I showed you, I don't want you to think Rattler just always, you know, bows out at the sight of pressure because that's simply not true. I mean, here against Kentucky, this is one of my favorite throws from his entire film. Here, the running back basically gets pushed back into the lap of Rattler. And what does he do? Yeah, he just slides left and then steps up and then delivers a beautiful seam route jump ball to his receiver. And this is perfect placement. And he throws it up to Leggett, who's his big bodied receiver. You know, I could see him throwing this ball to a T Higgins at the next level, whatever team he might be on. And, you know, just use a big receiver, a big tight end, just blot out the sun, blot out your defender, kind of get that inside leverage, play the box out game and just go up and make a catch. Pressure doesn't always phase this guy. And then here's another great play against Vanderbilt that I really liked where Rattler drops back and then pressure instantly comes like it basically does all the time and he sidesteps and climbs. Sure, he throws this ball on the run, which isn't always awesome, but I kind of don't care here, right? He had nowhere else to go. He could have shuffled back there, but he went to extend the play up in the pocket. He climbed and made this beautiful throw on the run, a little improv style as Leggett was going towards the middle of the field, then broke it out as he saw Rattler kind of bail out towards the sideline. Rattler hits him perfectly and first and goal at like the one yard line. You really can't ask for more from this play. Rattler shows off a lot of things here. You know, and I'll talk about it soon. He's not a crazy athlete. And, you know, at his combine, he ran almost a five-second 40. 
but he has sneaky acceleration and he's kind of just fluid behind the line of scrimmage. Not much past line of scrimmage, but behind the line of scrimmage, he makes a lot of guys miss and he extends a lot of plays. And here is a prime example of what he can do. So the majority of this video has been a sob story, a complete boo-hoo, poor me, Spencer Rattler, I have no help, plea for help, right? <laughs> Just a cry for help. And while that's true, because, you know, that's what the majority of this video is, it's not always the case, right? He had some talent on offense with Xavier Leggett, who makes a really nice catch over the middle here on a nice in-breaking in-route. And his offensive line actually blocked against Tennessee, who's a good team. Now, the pocket collapses a little bit as, you know, time takes on, but... Spencer Rattler, man, he stays tall in a pocket, a pretty clean pocket, and this is what he can do when he has time. He can deliver beautiful strikes over the middle, and he really lived over the middle of the field in his college career, and I'll show you plenty more throws like this. And it's plays like these that make me go, yeah, he's an NFL quarterback that can make these throws if you just give him time. Here he comes off a of play action, right? Play action, drops back, one, two, three, boom, hit Spencer Leggett, high point over the middle, first down. Then we move on to the next play against Kentucky where a little bit of a low snap, but when you give him a clean pocket and he can wait, stand tall, he delivers bullets over the middle of the field. And here, right, takes the snap, waits and waits and waits, waits for Leggett to break open over the middle of the field, hits it, fits it right over that linebacker too that's guarding the underneath receiver, which is great, first down, and let Spencer Leggett catch the ball and make a play after the catch, which I think is huge at the next level. And then here is a play where South Carolina really gave him the time he needed because this throw would not even have a chance if there was pressure. Third and 11 against Florida, Rattler can stand tall in the pocket and finds his tight end on a bit of an option route there where he breaks towards the middle of the field, stops, and then pivots out. If Rattler's on the move, there's probably no chance that Rattler's even going to look at him to get the ball because Rattler had to bounce it out to the left or the right and has to you know change his ideas of where he wants to go with the ball. He has to change his reads. But since he can stand tall in the pocket, finds his tight end wide open over the middle of the field, in the red zone, first down. All right, and the last batch of throws I want to show you are throws that make me so, so excited for Spencer Rattler at the next level. At the end of my scouting analysis, after watching all the film of Rattler, I have hope. I have some, you know, at least if he works at the NFL level, I go, yeah, I can see why he worked. And it's throws like these, right? One of the biggest knocks on Rattler is that people say he's a bad decision maker. He forces throws. And truthfully, in all the games I watched, I don't think that's totally true. There were some throws where I go, okay, maybe you shouldn't have thrown it. But every quarterback has those. I don't think Rattler is some crazy exceptional case. And in the games I watched, three of his interceptions were last minute of the game, down these points, third and 12, and you got to make a throw. And he threw picks. That happens sometimes, but it's a throw like this one against Georgia where I go, yeah, man, you just want to throw it out to Spencer Leggett on third and 11. You want to give him a one-on-one -on -one shot to your kind of stud receiver. I'm pretty good with that. That's something I didn't see Michigan quarterback JJ McCarthy, who I just did a scouting report on ever make. So that makes me happy. And that's why I'm showing this throw over and over again, because I go, Hey, if Spencer Rattler kind of has the, I'm going to say the balls <laughs> to go for a throw like this with his big time receiver, count me in. And speaking of throws that J.J. McCarthy really never made, here, Spencer Rattler drops back and just delivers a really nice touch go route down the sideline in the back corner of the end zone. Here, the DN33 comes off a stunt where he basically goes unblocked up the middle. And Spencer Rattler stays tall, delivers the ball, and then I don't really worry so much about him. It looks like he bails on the throw a little bit, but I feel good with it because he completes the motion and then protects himself. It's not that he ducks away in the middle of the throw or even before the throw. He throws it. I feel like gives a good rotation on his hips and just everything. Like I think it's a good motion and then tucks away to protect himself. Good play all around. And then here we jump back to North Carolina where I go, yes, Spencer Rattler. Don't play scared. Give. Xavier Leggett, not Spencer Leggett, like I've been saying all video, Xavier Leggett, a chance to make a play. He's your big time receiver. Give him a high point jump ball. Let him go make a play because the one guy you can count on Leggett, he makes plays for you. And here, high point it, let him jump one-on-one -on -one and make a big play. And this is what I'm asking for from my NFL quarterback, right? Have the guts to take one-on-one -on -one coverage and trust your receivers, as long as they're good, I guess, right? <laughs> like, as long as you have a good receiver like Xavier Leggett, then I get it. 
Here, Rattler comes off of the play action, and there's instant pressure. I mean, they just don't block for him. A lineman comes right up the middle, hits him, but Rattler shows off the arm strength to throw this ball 45, 50 yards down the field, off his back foot, get enough air under the ball for Leggett to go up and make a jump ball contested catch because, yeah, the guy's awesome and going to be probably a second or third round pick in the upcoming draft. Trust your playmakers and give them a chance to make plays. And then here's a deep shot where I go, Xavier Leggett, man, I gave you all this praise. I need you to catch this ball. Now, this isn't perfect from the Spencer Rattler front, right? He could have looked off that safety a little bit more because the safety, if he was a good safety, might have picked this off or actually made a really good play on it, which Vanderbilt safety did, but at the next level or even better competition, this might have been picked. But I still like the accuracy, right? You have an open receiver down the sideline. That's something that we go back to with Spencer Rattler being raw, right? Is he the best at looking off coverage? No, not yet. But maybe that's something he can develop at the next level. And if he can put accuracy on this ball while looking off a of safety, then he's going to be golden at the NFL level. And it's a throw like this that makes me really happy because I saw probably number two overall pick, Jane Daniels, do this left, right, and center at LSU his senior year. The sluggo. The sluggo was his go-to route. And to see Spencer Rattler do this to his go-to receiver is awesome to see. I think plays like this carry over to the next level in the NFL. Who's to say that Spencer Rattler doesn't get matched up with the New York Jets? And maybe he takes over for Aaron Rodgers in a year where he's going to throw this to Garrett Wilson. You know, he needs to be able to hit a playmaking receiver. And that's exactly what Spencer Rattler has proven to me in his game film. So before we end the video, the last thing I want to talk about is what kind of athlete is Spencer Rattler? You know, is he a threat on the ground at the next level? And in simple terms, the answer is probably no, but... He has some potential, right? Here is a great play where, you know, it's not anything insane, but the pocket breaks down. He steps up in the pocket, avoids pressure, and takes off for 20 yards. You know, that's no rookie play. That's great. And I think it comes from this whole generation of really good high school quarterbacks are pretty athletic back then. So they're able to run around and make plays. And maybe their athleticism doesn't really carry over to the next level, but they kind of just have the natural instincts of being a improvisational quarterback, and that's what Rattler can be at times. He has improv skills. Not a ton of athleticism past the line of scrimmage, but behind the line of scrimmage, he makes guys miss constantly, and he can always, always, always climb the pocket and make throws downfield. And then here's a great play against Georgia, and I'm glad he did this against Georgia that has actually great competition and good NFL caliber athletes because here, right, the pocket breaks down. He drifts a little bit too far back, which is a little bit of a tendency of his. Remember, trying to keep it positive here at Rattler, but he drops a little bit too far back and then he finds a gap and he breaks open and gets a first down, outruns number two, kind of. But hey, at least he does this against a good competition like Georgia who has real NFL athletes. And then here's another play against North Carolina where you go, okay, not super dynamic, but what does he do, right? He drops back and then outside pressure off the tackles comes in. So he climbs the pocket as a passer, but then he finally goes, all right, I got to take off and run kind of bounces off the nose tackle in the center and then breaks it for a first down. Not crazy athletic play, but hey, he did it. You know, that can translate to the next level. And here's the last play I want to show you, right? Rattler drops back and he looks and looks and maybe he takes off just a little bit too early. He could have probably stood in the pocket just a little bit longer. But what I like is what he does past the line of scrimmage. You know, he gets to that QB spy and he jukes him out. You know, this is a Georgia team. Like I said, they have NFL caliber athletes, and he makes a QB spy whiff and gets a first down and is safe, smart, and slides. Great play. All right, so we're 18 minutes and 40 seconds into the video, and you're probably sitting here if you stuck through the whole thing, and if you did, thank you, but you're probably sitting here wondering, what is Spencer Rattler going to be at the next level? And the simple answer is, dude, I got no idea. I don't want to claim that Spencer Rattler is raw. You know, I don't want him to get the raw tag because I don't think that's fair. I think Rattler had to play with the conditions that he did, you know, that he had. He had a not great offensive line and not a lot of weapons. So I think that forced him to lock on to one receiver and Xavier Leggett often, really often. And, you know, in the, when it came to offensive line and staying in the pocket, while I think he did a great job of staying in the pocket and not just looking to run, I would say more than the top, you know, five or six quarterback prospects, he looked to run sometimes. He would drift back in the pocket too far, which would cause, you know, the, the outside defensive ends able to get a pursuit angle on him because he just couldn't trust standing in the pocket for too long. I get all that stuff. 
and I'm hoping at the next level, those are things that can get worked out. I pray a team like the Atlanta Falcons, who just acquired Kirk Cousins, or the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers, you know, let's Spencer Rattler just sit behind a veteran quarterback like that and learn. Don't even risk playing him this year. Maybe give him some run at the end of the season if things aren't going right or if you have a playoff spot locked up, sure. Let him sit and develop, and then maybe next year or two years down the road, it could be Spencer Rattler's turn. We've seen it work out for Patrick Mahomes, who sat out for a year. Jordan Love, who sat behind Rodgers for a year. Even Lamar Jackson sat out for most of his rookie season, played at the very end. It works for quarterbacks, and Spencer Rattler has a lot of opportunity and a lot of upside if molded correctly.